Hello, yeah, yeah. How you doing, beautiful? What kind of mischief are you up to this Friday? Frying Friday. We're making sure I said that right. Yeah, Frying Friday. Hello, Luna. Hello, Mikey. How you doing today? Hope everyone is having a very, 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 very good Friday. I need to put... I'm going to put Pete's Dragon up here. Just so it's like out of my way. I am doing. That's all I'll say is doing. <laughs> and let me tell you, tell, tell, tell you, tell your mom she got to give you like lots of ice cream after the surgery. That's like a rule. Lots of ice cream and cookies. That that's a rule. Everybody that goes through surgery gets either jello, yeah, or ice cream and cookies. It's a rule because I've seen it written down somewhere. I may have written it, but it's written down somewhere. I have to say, it'll melt. It'll melt. Hello, Red. What's good? Yes, folks, your eyes are not deceiving you. We are doing a Friday stream. You see, I can't even get gooey butter cake to go through the mail. Because it gets all like, ugh. Who, me? Sneaky? I'm not sneaky. If you got the notifications on, I am totally unsneaky. Oh, crud. I know what's missing. I just realized what's not up. I forgot to start Chatty Bot. No, even, even Spaceman ice cream melts. You ever had those dots? They actually melt. Now, they keep them in like a silver container, so if it melts, it stays in one place.
And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. How are we doing on this fine, fabulous, fantastic, fricassee Friday? Hope you guys are all well out there. But ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you guys to the original Game Show Network. And we come to you live Monday, Thursday, Saturdays, and those occasional Fridays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Sunday streams. You're only occasional and early, so I know you're not here to say, well, you need to stream every day. No. We have, we have obligations. Have to do it. <laughs> Why are you pooped, Spock? You should not be pooped. Uh, yeah, it's Friday already. See, bros has a calendar. Bros knows it's Friday. Of course, he probably had to ask Mrs. Bros, have I got my trophy yet today? No? Okay, well, it's still, it must, it's still early on Friday. So he hasn't gotten his trophy yet for the day. But, hopefully everybody's having a good, good Friday. Uh, we really don't have much to say. We really don't have much to say. Uh, I just decided that, that's me, Spock. I, it's like, today was the first day at the office where I didn't nearly, like, just put my head on my desk. So it was like, weird. It was weird. Good Friday with, no, every Friday is a good Friday. Because it's the weekend. Unless you have to work on Saturday or Sunday. Then every Friday is a good Friday. Um, I gotta get that swallowed down my throat. Uh, but yeah, like I said, guys, we're going to do the occasional random during the week stream. And I figured I was in a good mood. So why not tonight? Why not tonight? Besides which, I figure i got to get some extra stream days in to see if I can get people to show up. And then maybe they'll show up and follow, and then they'll get the notifications on the regular nights. Makes sense, right? If nobody comes in on Tuesdays or Mondays or Thursdays or Saturdays, no offense to anybody that does, then it's like, okay, well, maybe they don't know we're here. <laughs> and if they don't know we're here, that's a problem. <coughs> that's a big problem. And I forgot my charger. Darn it. <coughs> I forgot my charger. It's upstairs. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, I actually saw that today. I actually saw that um, today while I was looking at notifications for something else. Can't remember what it was for, but I was looking for notifications for something. I was like, when did this happen? Yep, it was heavy. Heavy D gave out forty of them last night. He gave out forty of them last night. I'm like, damn. Really? You go? You'll spend your money on on forty of them for everybody? It's like, wow. Yeah, because that that's a lot of moolah. That is a lot of moolah. Nerdy's always broken, though. That's when we... Everybody tries to break Nerdy. It's just a question of who does it and when. And for what reason. You can break him with your generosity. You can break him with your good jokes. You can break him with your bad jokes. You can break him with your physisms. And you can break him with your heroisms. That's six, right? I think. I can't... Seven? Wait, wait, wait. All right, generosity, good jokes, bad jokes, uh, heroisms, physisms. That's five. Okay, that's five. I can't count. That's why I don't do the math on this side. I let you guys do the math on that side. But yeah, I'd actually on... You broke nerdy on Yoda's tech. Ooh, you're going to have to tell that story. Shame, 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 shame. Uh, Red knows where I was going with that joke. 
Red knew where I went with that joke. Um, but yeah, like I said, I kind of want to hit him a little, though. I do want to hit him a little because it was, he's like, you need to stream during the week. And I'm like, all right, you do the Tuesday night, you do the Wednesday night, you do the Thursday night show. I'll stream on the Mondays. That way I can watch SCW stuff. Oh, no, I'm adding a Monday show. You little bastitch. I, can, I don't have enough computers to run my stream, watch your stream, watch this stream, watch that stream. Ugh. Find a time and pick it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, we got the pay-per-view. Why, ah, damn it. Why do I have a blank letter there? There we go. Let's see if that fixes it. Nope, still didn't fix it. There we go, that fixes it. Kind of. Uh, but it did what it wasn't supposed to do. Hold on. It did what it wasn't supposed to do. And... Resize that there. And resize that there. There we go. Well, I, I, no, I got a huge screen that basically runs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things showed up. Because uh, I don't have the one player game up tonight. That's the only thing I don't have open right now. But as I said, guys, tonight, if we get some participants in, we are going to be playing a brand new game tonight. We will be playing the game of Wonderball. All right, it's called Wonderball. But it's one of those where it requires a little luck to win. And, a, well, it takes a lot of luck to win. But you can, like, uh, negotiate down, so to speak. Sort of sell of the century-ish. But I have watched... No, not Vanderbra, Vanderball. Vanderball. Thank you. Got stuff for you. Uh, Alright, hold on, guys. I don't know what she got. I'll be right back. Bear with me, folks. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you pick up any food or. Yeah. I don't know when I'll make it though. Oh, I, I thought I meant like this. Oh, no, I didn't pick up any fast food. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Who's wearing a Vander Bra? Twisted wearing a Vander Bra. Twisted will wear anything. She buys me wine and coke. I gotta figure out how to mix those. <laughs> I have to figure out how to mix those. What? Uh, coke and uh, Riesling? Yeah. Oh, gee. I don't think that works together. <laughs> Red says, hello, Bubbles. Hey, Red. Yoda says, hello, Bubbles. Well, they say, hi, Bubbles. Hi, everyone. For those that follow me on Instagram, I, f I actually posted two photos today. Okay. Um, Luna also says, who bubbles? Or who, Mrs. Bubbles? Who? Who. H-U. Oh. Believe it or not, Red, it's mine. She doesn't like it. What? The Big Turk. Yeah. And mine now. It tasted like chocolate-covered gummy bears. You heard that, right? She said it was chocolate-covered gummy bears. Sometimes I wonder if the woman has any taste. I do. Okay. All right, up. I am. I know you are. <laughs> ah. 
anyway, where were we? How can you not like them? They're good. Red, you might have to get your Canadian card checked. Twisted, you don't like anything. We know that. <laughs> we talking about we talking about chocolate. We talking about chocolate. Uh, I gave her two of them. She ate one. She left me. She gave me the other one. I'm down to six now, I think. They don't last long. They do not last long. That's the only problem with chocolate in my house. You very Vanderwals. Yeah, that's what we were talking about, Twisted, was your Vanderbra. We were talking about your Vanderbra. He'll do it on air too. Don't do it. don't don't you don't believe me? Go check the archives. There's a scene of him doing it. There really is. The problem is there wasn't that much push up to it. <laughs> ah. Anyway, guys, like I said, yes, it is Friday. No, he's got a lacy one. You have to you have to go back. You gotta really go look for it, Yoda. But he wore a very very lacy one. I want to say it was all white, very lacy, and was it the pink and black? Yeah, it was the pink and black one. That's right. Oh, sh shut up, Streamlabs. Hold on, I'm gonna fix that. Give me a minute. I gotta fix that one. No, I think the black one was ordinary. I think the black one was ordinary. Uh, there. Alright, that should fix that. I hope that fixes that. Okay. I'm still trying to figure out what to do for the betting thing. Brawl streamers. I'm still trying to figure out what to do for the betting thing and the giveaway if I want to use them. Alright, so give me one second. to get that in there um, because I kind of thought it was necessary okay um, I had to get that fixed I had to fix that hello Coda how you doing today um, but with that ladies and gentlemen I really don't have much on the talking to list talking points list so I figured we're going to get right into it. With 
tonight's list. And with that, I'm going to say, I think the first one is going to be like ridiculously easy. Thank you for that, Coda. Uh, I get the film. I got the film. The first list is going to be ridiculously easy. Twisted making designs for his bras. Twisted doesn't design anything. He just slaps together lace and duct tape, and he's good to go. You say five is hard. What? Wait, wait, wait. Five is. What do you mean by five is hard? No, five will not be the hard one. Five will be the hard one. No, I I really think this will be very, very, very easy. Yeah, you need one that says doctor on one side, pepper on the other. I'm telling you, it'll be a hit. I guarantee you it will be a hint. A hit, hit, hint, hit. hit. All right, so for this list, ladies and gentlemen, we are looking for famous spies, fact or fictional. Okay? They can be... They can be fact, real-life spies, or they can be fake fictional, written, sort of spies. And you had to know my all-time favorite sp spy was up there. Although we got into a debate at the office. Maybe you guys can help help me decide. Okay? Who was better? Was Daniel Craig better or Timothy Dalton better? That's my question. As James Bond, who was the better character? Daniel Craig or Timothy Dalton? Because I went with the thought that Timothy Dalton was the ultimate kick-ass limited comedy super James Bond character. And somebody said to me that other than, well, other than Quantum of Solace, I think was the one he said, he said Daniel Craig stood out as the pre- be specific, Twisted. Be specific. Daniel Craig did what Timothy Dalton did. The Spice Girls. Boo. Bad pun, bros. Bad pun. Ethel is on the list. That's why I said you had to be specific. That's why I said you had to be specific on that one. And Julius was on the list. See, I wasn't going to let you guys get away with just saying the Rosenbergs. Although I could have, because I did have... I did have an 11th that I was going to put on here. But I wanted to see who knew both Julius and Ethel's names. I actually had an 11th one I could have put on here, and I think somebody mentioned them already. Which was... Um, bum, 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 bum. John Steed. Yeah, somebody said John Steed, and I was going to put John Steed on there. 
and I passed. Detected or not spies? Um, for the most part, I will agree with you. But there have been a couple who were. You're thinking government spy. You're thinking government spy. Spy. I would say anybody that was hired by a company to spy would count. Um, the Avengers are not spies. Yeah, the, the Avengers are definitely spies. I would have put Steed on there. Emma Peel counts as a spy. Um, because they are, they were spy. They they were agents. For now, see, I wouldn't put Mister Ink. No, Mister Ink would not count as spy. They count as detectives. The one I'm thinking of is, um, oh, who am I trying to think of? The guy from Mr. Robot. Uh, um, 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 uh, I can't think of his name, the character's name now. It'll come to me at some point. Benedict Arnold? No, I don't know if I'd put him as a spy. He, he was just a traitor. I don't think I'd put Arnold as a spy. But that's just my opinion. So for our first list of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, we are looking for famous spies, factual, real-life spies, or fictional. Now, who's the African-American one? Um, oh, God, I can't think of his name now. Um, oh, he was a former slave. Oh, I can't think of his name now. Is, is it like a nice little piece of informational history? But he basically was the first real spy of the American Revolution. He played the, he played the slave role perfectly. Morris Moberg. I can't remember. Are you sure it was Lafayette? I'm trying to think. It might have been... Right, that's the one I'm thinking of. It, his name might have been Lafayette. See, but when I think of Lafayette, I think of General Lafayette. So, but I do remember he was considered America's first spy. And they never caught him. Never caught him. Agent Cody Banks. Malcolm in the middle. Agent 99. Yep, those would count, but they're not there. Vin Diesel as Triple X. Or, if you are more of a fan of Ice Cube, Ice Cube is Triple X. Or was it? Yeah, it was Ice Cube that was Triple X. 
You know, I'm shocked nobody stole that one from you, Twisted, after you did Agent 99. I am shocked nobody stole that one from you. Like, I will admit, I am a huge fan of everything in the Triple X series. But when they have Vin Diesel and Ice Cube together, I, I marked out. I, I got to admit, I marked out in that movie. That was Triple uh, X 3. I'm trying to find the Civil War spot. Uh, who would be the best of the Civil War spies? Uh, it said Ansel Adams was one, but I don't believe it. Um, yeah, James Armstead. That's the one I'm thinking of. I think. And my camera is flicking out again. Give me a second. I have to do this every so often to get the camera right. I gotta do that every so often to get the get the. Yeah, it's still still fuzzy. Hold on. I gotta I gotta fix my chroma key. I really gotta fix my chroma key. See, I remember him as Armstead though. I remember him as Armistead. But yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Was his last name Lafayette? Might have been. It might have been. But I remember Armistead. That, thank you guys. That was the one that was, it was going to like gnaw in my brain for a while. But yeah, he never got caught. He is considered one of the greats. But he's not considered the greatest. I will tell you guys right now, the greatest is still up here. The greatest is still on this list. Just so you guys know. Damn. I give you 25 characters, Twisted. 25 Oh, that would be uh, Michael Weston. He would count too. That's a good one. I loved. I loved Bird Notice. And what I liked about Bird Notice was, I don't know if. Yeah, she did. He's not up there, though. You know the French girl, right? Um, um, what's his girlfriend's name? No, Inspector Gadget is, is a spy. Yes, he's a detective, but he is also a spy. He would be one of those good crossover examples where you ask... Where you asked if a detective could be a spy? Inspector Gadget fits both. Harry Tasker. Ooh. Pulling up some good ones. Who's the one on Mr. Robot, though? Who's the one on Mr. Robot? I still consider him a spy. Uh, I gotta think about this one. I gotta think about this because I didn't realize I put. Ah, damn it! J. 
Johnny English is there. I'm, I'm trying to decide who I have to give one to. I'm trying to decide who I have to give one of them to. I think Spock earned it because he put both names in there. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to give this one to Spock. Because he did put both names on that one. He put Natasha Fatal and Boris Badenov. I had Boris and Natasha both as one. That, that was... It was the fact you put both names for both of them, Spock, I think is what put you over the edge on that one. Boris. And Natasha. I can't do Natasha. I, can, I used to be able to do Boris's voice slightly. I am Boris. I can't do it anymore. All right, so we got three left. And ironically, one of them is considered the greatest of all times. And you guys haven't gotten that one. And just so you guys know, I played fair with the girls and the guys. So we had Ethel, we had Mata Hari, and we had Natasha. Yes, I would count Black Widow as a spy. The Saint depends on which Saint. No, actually, I would say he would count as both. I, I think you could take any one of the three. Now, see, I do not consider Inspector Clouseau a spy. I think I consider Inspector Caluso as a detective only. Jason Bourne, yes. Natasha Romanoff, yes. Well, they were all Simon Templars, Yoda. I had to think for me because there's been three variations of the Saint. There's the Roger Moore Saint, the Val Kilmer Saint, and then the last one, and I can't think of the actor who played him. And they all did very well bringing out different per different things of it. I actually owned a Pink Panther on um, DVD. Some no, I think it actually broke one of the DVDs. I actually have like the the five set. And at one point, I thought about putting it in the prize pile because I don't really want it. I'll have to go look and see if I have the whole thing. Sydney Bristow from Alias. She was my dream girl. She was my dream girl. I'm sorry, Jennifer Gardner was... Made me feel like I was 21 again. Um... I know, I hate when people, I give the stuff away. Which name, which name did you put in, Twisted? Julian Assange. Um, you know, I would say yes. I would say he would count. <coughs> Help me out, Twisted. Tell me which one so I can unblock it. <coughs> like, put some spaces in there. But yeah, I'd actually consider Assange. Yes. Or intentionally misspell it. All right, let me go look. Let me check Cloudbot. Who 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 got you? Was it Cloudbot or? Yeah, it was Cloudbot. 
All right, give me a minute. I don't have a problem with people using that word. So, um, auto permit. Let's see, we'll turn this off. Back. All right, that one should be good. Try it again. Why is it no 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 hold on it's gonna it's gonna hit you again hold on Evelyn Salt I thought I was the only person that was a fan of that movie All right now try it twisted Now try it let's see if it takes Uh Paul Revere There we go Okay that one's fixed as long as nobody abuses the word, it should be fine. Uh, Paul Revere. Mm, I don't consider him a spy. I don't consider him one. Agent three five five. No, the one that was in, the the one that was in the disguise was Agent twenty two, I think. Yeah, I don't I don't consider Revere a spy. I consider him a messenger. Ah, all right. I gotta put some of my other duplicates away. I still I still have not finished sorting through my Happy Meal box. Which I really, really need to do. Oh, I should have just put the Christmas ornament up there. Yeah, but there weren't many famous ones. There weren't many that were like well, super well known. I know there was one. I'm gonna put the Christmas ornament up there just so it's up there. And I can't think of who, or the name of the one I'm thinking of. Um, I gotta think about that one for a minute. Oh, dude, it, there will be nights where it's like I can picture picture the the encyclopedia page in my head, but it's like the name just kind of like escapes me. Jungle book, jungle book, jungle, jungle. Sorry, I'm in a goofy mood tonight. I am. I'm in a seriously goofy mood tonight. So we are looking for... Famous spies, factual real-life spies, or fictional spies. And I have seen a lot of really good guesses. But I am going to say I am shocked that one of the most famous... Hey, Scuds! No, I don't think Ian Frank counts as a spy. I don't think Anne Frank would count it as a spy. Scouts? No, scouts are on a different level spot. Tubman was the one was the one I knew of. But yeah, I would put scouts in a completely different category. And again, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be doing a brand new game. I finished it in two days. One, two. Oh, wait, I better do it the other way. One, two. Uh, yes, I'm a huge fan of Nick Knowles. I said this today, and I got to thinking about it. Okay? If you guys haven't heard the news, all right, 
Alex Trebek is going through pancreatic cancer. He is not going to be with us much longer. I am not a big fan of saying grab a Brit and put him in Alex's place. So the first thing I actually said today on Twitter at some point, when I read the story that Alex is admitting he's in pain while he's taping these, these episodes. He is in pain while he's taping the episodes. And I said, and off, off, just first response was, if Alex is done, Jeopardy's over. If Alex is done, Jeopardy is over and done with. There is nobody that can replace Alex. And right after I sent that, I sat back and I thought, and I said, well, what if I had to have one person for contractual purposes? And I thought really, really hard on this. Because I am a huge fan, like I said, of game shows. I don't want to see Ant. I don't want to see Deck. Um, I don't want to see Regis. Um, I, knew I, I wanted somebody low-key that comes across as knowledgeable but not arrogant. So I don't want that guy from 500 Questions. So I sat back and I thought about it, and I told myself, if, if Jeopardy continues after Alex Trebek, there is one host I want, and that's it, and that's Nick Knowles. He is the only host that I can think of that plays the character in it plays the character of I know this but I'm going I'm I don't play it up. No, Donald no 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 no. No. Donald Trump is not a game show personality. It's got to be a game show personality. It has to be somebody that when they give you the answers, they give you a Dick Clark, Wink Martindale, Alex Trebek film. Where it's like, you should have known that it was blank, blankety blank, but that's all right, you'll get the next one. That's what I always felt with Alex. Alex is like, yeah, you should have known it, but don't worry, you got the next one. It'll come to you. The only two guys I can think of. Hey, Pat, how are you doing, my friend? The only two that I can think of right now is Nick Knowles and uh, the, guy, the guy that did Million Dollar Mind. Oh, I just, I dropped his name. I just lost his name. The American version of Million Dollar Mind. And, and I'm like, okay, it's kind of blasphemy because I know the English don't like Jeopardy. Believe it or not, guys, I have seen this from a lot of British, British game show fans. Napoleon Solo is on the list. The man from UNCLE. I like Bradley Walsh, but he's too comedic. Bradley Walsh is perfect when, in something where he has not just contestants, but he's got to like kind of like shoot down the egos of the star, like he does on the check. He's perfect in that role. Um, God, what is what is the guy's name? The the other British one. And like I said, at first I thought it was... No, not Steve Seabold. Hold on, I'll, I'll tell you who it is. I will tell you who it is. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Uh, 
It is not Steve Seabolt. It is... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Vernon K. Vernon K. I should know that because he's like one of my favorites. And again, I'm not a fan of giving giving Jeopardy to a British host. But those would be the only two. That's it. That I think could take over Alex's shoes. Vernon K would be my number one choice. Nick Knowles would be my number two choice. And again, ladies and gentlemen, for the list, we are looking for two more famous spies, factual, real-life spies, or fictional character spies. I am not telling you whether the ones that remain are, are real life. I'm not telling you if they're fictional. I am not giving you guys any hints on this one. None, zilch, not a none. Well, Vernon K. did a lot because I loved him in um, Family Fortunes. He did, um, he got saddled with some really bad ones. Secret Fortune, which is like one of my all-time favorite trivia games. You guys don't know how much I love Secret Fortunes. Um, Nick Knowles did The Rich List. No, Nick Knowles did Secret, List, Secret Fortune and The Rich List. Vernon K. did the British version of 1001 Heartbeats. Yes, she did. She went all DS9 on us. She's trying to, she's trying to get to my... Um, um, she's trying to get to my Trekkie side. That's what she's trying to do. But Vernon K. did the uh, Million Dollar Mind in the States. And he did a fabulous job of it. Whereas Nick Knowles did, like I said, and it's one of my all-time favorites, is Secret Fortune. So those are really the only two that I can think of that I would put on Jeopardy. But again, here's my problem. The Brits, everybody on the, on the continent, is not a fan of Jeopardy. Brits in particular. Because there's no um, hook. It's literally the game show that came about to, to erase the stigma of the scandals. And it did so beautifully. But the but because the Brits always have had the low payouts, it's like it doesn't it doesn't work for them. Whereas we would have a hundred dollars, two hundred, three hundred, or two hundred, four hundred, six hundred, eight hundred thousand. They have twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, and a hundred. No, there was actually um, scuds. There was actually a British version. But it did not do well. And the British critics said, why do the Americans like this so much? Because there's no there's no hook, there's no gimmick to it. And I'm like, yeah, the gimmick is game shows were ruined by the scandal because the answers were given away. And Jeopardy just said, let's do this. We'll give them the answers. They give us the questions. And we will freaking kill the game show scandal. And they did it. If it wasn't for Jeopardy, think about all the game shows we wouldn't have. Just think about it. And like I said, 
the the closest and the Brits have had their own game show scandal issues. Um, like I said, I was a huge fan of the ITV Play Network. When I worked at the as, as a hotel front desk clerk, dude, that's all I had on. That is all I had on the on my computer. I took my computer to the hotel. I hooked it up to the internet, and I would go find ITV Play, and I would go watch The Mint, School Days, Quizorama, uh, what was the other big one? Uh, the one that was in the pub. The one that was in the pub. Uh, God, I can't think of that one now. And it's like, I could sit there and I could watch that all day. I could, because it was no repeats. It was like every show was good. Where do you think we actually got the list idea from? Hmm? Where do you think we got this idea from? We literally took this from ITV and Game Show Network. The only difference is we don't put a prize on every answer. We do not put a prize on every answer. Because it kind of defeats the purpose of watch, play, win. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, like I said, I grew up a game show fan. Why do you guys think I don't stream video games? Because everybody streams video games. And I wanted something that I loved. I wanted something that I loved that worked for me. Oh, it didn't fix it. Hold on. Did it fix it? Nope, didn't fix it. Dang it! I hate when it does this. I'm the ghost. I'm the ghost. I'm the invisible man. I'm the semi-invisible man. Um, so tonight, if you are in Scotland, and you have been watching ITV4, I think, for the, <laughs> my vanishing is pirated, <laughs> I think it's on ITV4. I basically borrowed a current game show that just got done playing... From, I think they're up to episode 30. I borrowed it. And I made a version of it. And we're going to be playing that tonight. And I busted my butt to make it work. Um, I had one bug in it yesterday that I could not get around. It took me about four hours to find it. It took me four hours to find the bug. In addition, ladies and gentlemen, we have the mystery puzzle right here. If you can solve this one, uh, we're going to give you something. If you can solve the four-letter word up there in the corner, you get a shot at the vault. And again, I'm, I am going to apologize. Some people cannot see this one as well as they should. Uh, unfortunately, the, because of the one I chose, we're kind of stuck with it as is. Once I start one, I don't change it in the middle. Um, because it kind of is unfair to everybody that's being, that might have been guessing at this one. So we are still looking for two famous spies. Just two. I always have to remember, I kind of have to like point forward, or it doesn't look like I'm pointing at it. It looks like I'm pointing back at the Riddler.
Benjamin Frank accused but not, I I will be honest if you ask me in history I would say Benjamin Franklin was but because he was a statesman he got away with it but that's just my opinion that's just my opinion and I think I'm going to get my hair cut tomorrow <laughs> Yoda's on the Star Trek kit because she thinks I put in the Star Trek questions already. I have not put in the Star Trek questions already. I just got about three quarters of the Canadian questions in. Oh, dude, Scuds, um, I am a huge fan of Pointless. I love the chase. With one exception. The one thing I don't like about the British version is they have four chasers. And this is always this has always been my one knock where the British blew it and the Americans got it right. <laughs> I know, you could try. The Brits needed one chaser. Not four. We don't need four bad guys. A, a good bad guy can stand by himself. You don't need four just to cover every diversity range. There was only one Joker. There was only one Riddler. There was only one Two-Face. Yeah, there were a lot of villains versus Batman. But in this case, you only need one villain to all your superhero contestants. It's literally who can be the one bad guy. That's the one thing I have always disliked about the British version of the chase. Game Show Network got it right when they said we want one. And we want Mark LeBette. Because he is the most charismatic of all four of them. Singh has no personality. Uh, the governess, she would have been my second choice. Uh, there were comics where she, where Lola, they say, Lola. yeah, I remember that. And it actually worked comic book wise, but she didn't make the list, Spock. The, the funny thing is, and this is the funny thing, I hear more Brits complain about Mark LeBette because he lost more as a chaser than anybody else. And I'm like, dude, you've got to give the contestants a chance. It doesn't have to be a big chance. It's sort of like the casino. Your best game to play is blackjack. Your odds are 51-49 in favor of the house. But to me... Singh is personalityless. The governess I like, but she takes the I'm going to be the bad guy too seriously. Mark's like, yeah, I'm going to beat you, but if you beat me, you won fair and square. Who's the fourth one? There's Singh, the governess, Mark, and... Oh, uh, who's the fourth chaser? I'm drawing a blank. I should know this because I watched every every freaking British chase episode. Dark Destroyer. Thank you, Scott. No, that's Singh. Singh is the Dark Destroyer. Isn't he? Singh's the Dark Destroyer. Then you got the Governess. Mark's the Beast. I swear there's a fourth one, and I can't think of who it is. Um, like I said, see, I do pay attention to British game shows, as you guys will see tonight. 
But yeah, that's the that's the only thing I think the Brits screwed up on the chase. You have one bad guy and everybody trying to take him down. Everybody trying to take him down. You don't need four bad guys. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay, I have it backwards. Singh is a sinner man. Then there's the Dark Destroyer, the Beast, and the Governess. I forgot about the Sinner Man label. You're right. Um, but the thing, like I said, the thing is, Mark is the only one on every episode I've ever watched that hit any personality. He is the only one that hit any personality. The Governess shows flashes of it, but not enough to say, I want her as my villain all the time. Yep, you got, I, well, because I'm talking, so you guys are getting bonus time. I don't know if it's going to help or not, but you guys are getting bonus time. Um, if she took, I don't want to say a less haughty, You've never seen Man from Uncle Spot? Oh, dude, you need to you need to go watch Man from Uncle. I'm telling you, go watch Man from Uncle. Um, if she was more, if she came across more as a school mom, because that's that's what she's supposed to be is like a really kick ass school mom. If she came across as a school mom who appreciated the smart students, I would love her. But she never does. It is basically, she is, and that's why I don't like the Sinner Man, and that's why I don't like the Dark Destroyer. You didn't win, I just screwed up. And it's like, no, that's not what, as an, and again, this is a, as an American fan. That's not one I want to hear. I want to hear, dude, I had a bad game, but you beat me fair and square. I never hear that from the Sinner. I never hear that from the Dark Destroyer. I don't think I, I... I will say, I think I heard that once from the Governess. It's, we want a good fight. We want to root for the underdog, but if the champ wins, we'll give credit where credit is due, as long as the champ gives credit. Why do you think everybody liked Iron Mike? Iron Mike Tyson, I'm the great, or Muhammad Ali, I'm the greatest. No, Vixen is not the easiest to beat. They did, they did a study. They say Mark was the easiest to beat percentage-wise. But Vixen typically ended up with games where it was the most wrong answers. If I, if I, I may have it reversed. I may have it reversed. But it was Vixen was the most likely to give you a game because they get stuff wrong. But Mark was the one that got beat the most. I, like I said, I have to remember because it's been a long time since I looked at those stats. All right. So with that, you guys missed two of them. Oh, Spock, playing is smart. He's like, I'm going to give everybody a couple more minutes because I'm going to delay the game with the wheel. Oh, wrong button. Damn, 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 damn. All right, Spock. You get to take one more number off the vault. Which row would you like me to remove the incorrect number from? Uh, 
So yeah, like I said, so taking this back to where we started, I will say the only two Brits that I think deserve or earned a spot to take over for Alex if Jeopardy keeps going are Vernon Kay and Nick Knowles. That's it. Bradley Walsh is too comedic. Uh, he is more of the interactive type. He he is literally, he's got to talk to the contestants, converse with the contestants, converse with if you've got a panelist. Yeah, you get to take one number off. Oh, he said wheel around the restroom. So let's just hide the wheel. Let's hide the vault. He didn't get the vault. He didn't get the vault. Um, Alexander Armstrong. No. No. And correct me if I'm wrong. Alexander hosted the U.S. version of 500 Questions, right? I'm trying to remember. If, I, if I've got it right, Alexander hosted the the U.S. version of 500 Questions. No. Uh-uh, uh, uh, uh No way, no how. That man bored me on what should have been an absolutely incredible game. Now, if I'm thinking of a different one, let me know. Oh, okay. You're thinking, no, um, no, Alex is good for a game that, if, I, if, it, if it, let me put it this way, if I were to replace Steve Harvey for Family Feud, Alex would be my choice. Who, who's the sidekick that sits with him? Because I just started watching one other... Um, wait, let me make sure I got the right one. Let me make sure I got the right one. Uh, bum, 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 bum. So who's the one I'm thinking of that does 500 questions that everybody suggested? Richard Osmond. Okay, Richard Osmond is the one I was trying to think of. I just found Richard had his own mini game thing that he did. Thank you. Yeah. All right, you want the second row to lose a number. All right, Spock. We can do that for you. We are a generous personality. All right, Spock, so with that, we need a four-digit number that you think is opening the vault. If, if I were to do a family feud, I would, grab, I would grab Alex. Richard Osmond, on the other hand, no. If I were to do a match game, I would use Alexander. If I were to do a match game, I would definitely use Alexander. Um, the funny thing is, I am not a fan of Alec Baldwin. I thought he did a fantastic job for the remake of Match Game. I just hated how, how bad the stars were. So I would put Alex Baldwin and Alexander really, really close to each other. Alright, Spock says it is three, one, one, seven. We lock that in. And we hear... We hear more sad trombones, which means it is not 3117. Um, now you got me thinking. I am trying to remember who hosted 500 questions. 
and it's going to kill me for a while. I can go look it up, but have I seen... I like Tipping Point, but I've never been a fan of games, game shows where there is that much luck involved. Um, because there is just too much that could go wrong. You could be absolutely brilliant on trivia and pure luck says you're not going to win anything. Um, it's one of those cases where the Brits were looking for a hook. Yeah, you got number one and number eight, Spock. And the rest all went to Twisty. Number four was Hitler's super spy, Alger Hiss. Alger Hiss was number four on the list. Number ten, and I'm going to say he is considered the ultimate spy. Number ten on the list was Harold Kim Philby. So you guys got all the fictional ones. It was the real ones that got you guys. It was the real ones that got you. Because you never believe his last name. <laughs> but yeah, Philby is said to be one of the all-time ultimate spies. And when I put this list together, I had to put Kim Philby on there. Go look him up, Spock. It's scary. It is very scary what he got away with. Until he got caught. Alright, so with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to load players and prizes. And tonight I'm going to do something slightly different. Because only Twisted and Spock got the slots. Well, there went the vault shot. And Harold Kim Philby comes up with a blank. Alright, so I'm going to do something a little different for the celebrity slot tonight. Because I don't know if I've got any one player games that are ready to go. If you get the one player game slot, I'm putting you in the main game. Plain and simple. If you get the one play, if you get the celebrity spot, you are in the main game. Because I have not had time to get Secret Fortune working or cleaned up, and that's the next one that's on the list for the one player game. And I haven't finished, and I have not fixed line them up. At, which is one I really, really need to fix. Alright, so we are going to check. Oh, it is Twisty! So, Twisty, you will be in the main game next. And, does Twisty get the small per Twisty also gets... The small prize of the night, or the first small prize of the night. All right, Twisty. So with that, you have your choice. We have the the single open deck of vampire cards, and again, I apologize, they're open. It was just how they came to me. We have the Sh Shaggy and Scooby versus the aliens. Burger King set. We have the Patrick Waugh statue. We have the Dolphin statue. We have Peach Dragon. Uh, we have the Hawkman key ring. And we have the Little Boy Christmas ornament. 
So with that twisty, which of the peach dragon it is? Elliot. And I can't find my stuffed Elliot. Of course, I can't even get him on camera because he's green. But that is Elliot from Peace Dragon. So that will be going to Twisty. And believe it or not, I got one more of these I have to give away at some point. So we will put that in Twisted's prize pile along with Wonder Woman. Twisty just has this odd assortment of smalls. <laughs> All right, so like I said, um, I am not going to do the one-player game on this list. I am not going to do the one spot. Quit being a know-it-all. You know that. You know that's what got a rant from somebody else at one point. Just warning you. Although I don't mind the facts. It was, and you don't do what the other idiot did that pissed me off, so. I'm just saying, be a little careful about what facts you know and throw out there. Uh, Don Bluth. I, I want to say he was one of the first to do live action and animation together. But I don't remember 100%. Alright guys, so give me one second. Because like I said, this is gonna be a little different than what we have normally done. So the first time in history. Oh, wrong one. Ah, I missed the I missed the jump the the first line. Damn it! All right, I gotta do it again. Be proud, Scotland! You guys have made history. This is the first ever Scottish originated game that we have done on this show. It's designed for three players or teams of two players each. Each of you are going to start with five balls. Yeah, behave yourself, Twisted. And you are basically trying to eliminate the other f team's balls they have on, this, on, this, on the game. Okay? What we have is basically a randomization factor. And there are more rules. I got a blank, blank text square in here. But I will tell you guys, if you guys watch YouTube, this game is no more than three weeks old. In real life. And I made my version in two days. So I want to say thank you to ITV Scotland for letting me do this. Or, or of course, or at least not saying you can't do this. One of the days I'll get a cease and desist letter and said, you can't do our game show. You're ruining our game show. I, one of these days I kind of like expect that from Buzzer. It's not as painful as it sounds, Spot. It is not as painful as it sounds. Alright. So with that, five balls. So we are going to put Twisty in slot number one. I need two more volunteers. Spot volunteered. So I need one more participant. I need one more. Twisty, as you are controlling the game, because you actually won, 
you can challenge anybody you want. If he wants to challenge somebody other than Spock, you go right ahead. No, I ain't touching that with a 20. I'm not touching that with Lucille. I know better. So we need one more volunteer. Ooh, Yoda, you've been challenged, girl. You have been challenged. <laughs> yeah, Luna said she has to. All right, so this is how it works. Twisty, you have the, the slots numbered 1 through 5. Spock has the slots numbered 6 through 10. Yoda has the slots numbered 11 through 15. There are... 15 balls in or 16 balls in our hopper. They are numbered from 1 to 15 and there's what we call a danger ball. Alright? We're going to do a random pull. Twisty, because you have 1 through 5, you're hoping we don't pull 1 through 5. Alright? So whatever we pull first is the first ball that could be eliminated. If, for instance, Twisty is in control of the board, which he is at the moment, if we pull a number from 6 to 15, if Twisty can answer the trivia question, he eliminates that ball. If we pull 1 through 5 and he answers the trivia question correctly, we put it back in the hopper. If he misses, we get rid of that ball. All right, there is one danger ball at the moment, and we will explain the danger ball if and when it gets pulled, because it will get pulled at some point. All right, so Twisted, the first ball to come out of the hopper is the number six. So you are trying to eliminate one of Spock's balls at the moment. So here is the question for you. Any molecule that has a chair or boat conformation has this many carbon atoms. Yeah, and some of the questions I will admit are hard, just to let you know. If you get this answer correct, you eliminate ball number six from Spock. If you get it wrong, we put it back in the hopper and Spock keeps it. The correct answer is... Oh, it's not going to show up. Darn it, i got to fix that. It is six. No, no, only Twisted answers his. You, only you will answer yours. Only Yoda will answer hers. Yeah, we basically go Twisted, Spock, Yoda, Twisted, Spock, Yoda, so on and so forth. So he got it wrong, which means Spock, your ball number six, stays in the game. It does not get eliminated. Alright, so here is your question, Spock, or your ball shoot number. It is number 15. So if you can get this right, you eliminate one of Yoda's. Name the Chilean poet of Desolation and Sonnets of Death. Name the Chilean poet of Desolation and Sonnets of Death. And your one minute timer starts now. So this question is for Spock and Spock only. William Taquito Spear. That's William Taco Spear, Twisted. But ladies and gentlemen, we are doing a brand new game. I just finished this today. 
It is not Juan Palo. It is known as, she is known as Gabriela Mistral or Lucila Godoy Alcayaga. All right, so that means we put Yoda's 15 back into the hopper. So nobody has been has had anything eliminated yet. All right, Yoda. The ball that we pull for you is number 12. All right. This is your own ball, which means if you do not get this right, it is eliminated from the game. Out of what material is a camel's hair brush made from? Out of what material is a camel's hairbrush made from? So, Yoda, you have to get this right to keep ball number 12. And the timer starts now. Out of what material are the... We're talking about the bristles, Yoda. I don't think there's metal in a camel hair's brush. It's one of those where it happened to be one of those screwy characters.